Uh, one case comes to mind, uh, a pilot and three passengers, two of whom were pilots themselves, were flying from southern Florida up to uh, North Carolina at night in a, a twin-engine propeller plane. And Willie Smith did the analysis with Dr. Hynek years ago. He, the, the two of them interviewed the pilot. Well, they had electromagnetic problems with their VOR, which is part of the, the in-flight navigation system, such that it was drifting them farther and farther out to sea. They were over the Atlantic Ocean at the time. They were about 10 miles off the coast of Florida. And they could keep the land in sight, but there was not much traffic, and it was the air was as reasonable and so forth, smooth. Well, that's the first part of the story, that they're drifting more and more. So air traffic control, I think at Atlanta, calls them and says, where are you going? Correct your flight path 10 degrees left, you know, get back to land, so to speak, because you're drifting further and further. And they check their VOR um, and find that it's correct that is reading correctly, even though the radar from the ground tells them they're in the wrong place, more and more. Well, this happens twice. They have two corrections in flight uh, over about a 40-minute period. Well, at one point, off to the east of them in the dark night sky, they see a light coming towards them, and it's fairly fast, it's fairly bright. They think it's an airplane. So he flashes his, his, his landing lights, which is standard operating procedure, right? just to signal they see you, because you don't want to have any collision, of course. The object comes towards them on a, uh, a bearing about 40 degrees, about the 2 o'clock position, roughly, relative to their heading. Now, it comes down to their altitude, and the witnesses claim that this was a triangle, an equilateral triangle, whose sides were vertical, if you can think of that, so it isn't a thin triangle, it's a thick triangle, about six stories high, what's that, 60 feet, 70 feet thick, and at least, I forget that the estimate was hundreds of feet side to side to side on the three sides, and a triangular opening in the middle. And the pilot said it was such a huge opening that he was contemplating flying through the middle of this thing to avoid it. The object comes to an instantaneous stop at some unknown distance, where they don't know how far away it was, and reverses 180 degrees and goes off as it has come at a high speed until it's out of sight. Well, as interesting as that case is, that's a non-aerodynamic vehicle as far as I'm concerned. It's not ball lightning. It's not birds. It's not a balloon for lots of reasons. It's not stealth technology because you'd never build anything but stealth that way. We don't know its, its propulsion. It did not produce a shock wave. In that case, there were no electromagnetic effects as it was near the airplane. Perhaps the earlier effects, we don't know. It had very bright, round lights, uh, like headlights, along this 60-foot high front facing it. It flew front forward, by the way, not point forward. Each of these round lights were estimated to be six feet in diameter and white. So you can calculate the, the megawatts that are required to light those searchlights up, whatever they are. And by the way, I don't think they're portholes and I don't think they're lights. I think they're a direct artifact of the propulsion system.